All right, so we are here directly after Tank Davis just energized the entire Las Vegas Strip. I'm pretty sure kids will be born tonight off the pure energy and, and euphoria that Tank Davis just put into the air here in Vegas at the MGM Grand. He knocked out Frank Martin. I thought cold, like he may not get up in the moment. He put on another fantastic performance. What just happened to break down? Let's go. All right, so Tank Davis, Frank Martin. Coming into this fight, we knew a couple things. One, Frank was gonna come down and wait that is probably not natural for him, so he's gonna be a little bit drained. Two, Tank Davis, 14 month layoff. Sometimes you never know how a guy's gonna come back, especially after you know having the jail time and, and some other stuff. How was he going to return? What was gonna be the tank we saw? Well, the tank we saw was the tank we knew. It was a carbon copy, tailor-made, Taylor Wade, no pun intended, version of Tank Davis. He told me in our interview before the fight, Leo run the tape, exactly what he was about to do. All right, well, final prediction. We'll get out of your face here. What do you think Saturday night? How's it go? Uh, six through eight. Six through eight. Like he said, six to eight round knockout. He told my boy Dan Canobio in a CVS two nights before the fight, he was going to knock out Frank in the eighth round. That's on record, you'll have to ask Dan. But that's two times he verified this was what he was gonna do, and I had to assume it was because that's usually the way Tank fights. This was, like I said, a typical fight for him. He came out very methodically. Frank looked good in the early part of the fight. Yeah, he was on guard, and he was backpedaling, and sometimes, and most times, putting himself in the corner, which would eventually lead to his demise, but he had good feet. Uh, he was able to land some left hands to keep Tank at bay early. Uh, his jab was nice, but he just felt like Tank was getting closer and closer as the rounds went by. He wasn't even throwing punches, and again, this is typical Tank. He's not a high-volume boxer. He wasn't even throwing to pressure Frank Martin. It was just sure movement, just, just aura, as the kids say. It was just him and the fear of being hit by any shot, really, from Tank. And when you watch a guy that's that confident in his power and his opponent is that concerned with his power, to be like, yeah, let me just hang out on the back foot here and not take too many chances. That's when you know you got someone that's that's special. And that's exactly what Tank is as a boxer, man. He is, I said it all week this week, I don't think he gets enough credit for his patience, uh, his footwork, his precision. I looked up at one point at the official numbers, uh, I think it was fourth, fourth or fifth round, and he'd only landed, or excuse me, he'd only thrown 50 to 60 punches. Through five rounds. I think it was 55, 60. He had landed like, 28, 29, 30. He was right there at that 40% to 50% range, which is just unheard of for power punching and not only just the low volume, but the accuracy that he lands with. And again, it just felt like round by round, he was getting closer. Frank was winning rounds. Potentially, you know, you could have said that Frank won the first three, potentially the first four. I, I think it was a little bit more even than that, like maybe going into to round eight when he eventually had the knockout, it could have been, you know, 5-3 Tank, maybe 4-4, four, 5-3 four, Frank, I don't know. But regardless, wherever you had it, going into that eighth round, it started to, to, and really at the end of the seventh round, it started to feel like Tank was just finding a home for the left hand more and more. As he had kind of overshot it uh, a couple of times, many times in the first six to seven rounds, he, at the end of seven, he was starting to build that confidence back and starting to see like, oh, okay, now I'm getting comfortable again being Tank Davis on the front foot, and the left hand started landing, right hooks behind it. I think he even stunned Frank in the seventh round a couple of times to give him like, okay, this next round is, is where we seal the deal. So round eight comes, and yeah. the thing with, with Tank Davis is you're gonna have to get his respect. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to stand and not take back steps with him. Maybe a Shakur Stevenson, as I'm thinking about it, is gonna be able to like have enough footwork, even you know forward and back, to be able to handle Tank's low output, like you have to be a high output fighter and you have to be able to either get his respect or have solid footwork to be able to manipulate him just walking forward with no jab, right? So Frank was doing that for, you know, five to six rounds and then finally in that a Tank corners him again. And this was the one thing that Frank was was not doing very well was, was putting himself in the corner. Tank wasn't boxing him into corners. He wasn't boxing him into the ropes. He was just walking him there. Literally, let's have this dance. I'm gonna lead you wherever I want you to go without throwing punches, just high guard walk in. And Frank just led himself into the corner once again. And I think what he really wanted to do in those situations was allow Tank to get punches off and throw a left-hand counter behind it and circle out. He had done it a couple times earlier in the fight, but you're playing with fire when you wanna trade with Tank Davis and your back is in the corner and you're squared off in your stance. Like that is worst case scenario 
with Tank. You want to be middle of the ring, have places to operate. You can go forward, back, side to side, you know, get your punches in and get out. When you say, okay, yeah, bring it over here. I'm going to plant my feet and we're going to trade. It was just asking to be knocked out, and that's exactly what happened. Tank catches him. I think, again, he overshot the left hand a couple times, and Frank dipped underneath. And finally, he decided he was going to go to that uppercut, that just devastator of an uppercut. And he was in range enough to do it because Frank couldn't go anywhere. Bangs the uppercut, pops the head up, and then he unloaded a left hand that I don't know I've seen at anybody under cruiserweight ever. Like, this was a nuclear bomb, a double barrel shotgun, as Conor McGregor says. He throws so damn hard that when he hit Frank on the chin, you could have watched it in two times speed and it felt like he was falling in slow motion. He was out cold. Freaking Redwood in San Francisco hitting the ground, yell timber because he's not getting up. And it was not just the power, and I've talked about it and I've talked about it, but the power and the precision to land it on the chin as Frank is moving away. He's stunned already from the uppercut, but he's moving out to his right and Tank just lines it up, sniper mode, bang. And uh, at that point, I'm sitting in the crowd with, with, with little camera boy Christian. We, you don't like that name, I know. We were going insane because your boy took the advice of Tank Davis. He said, I'm winning in round six to eight. He told Dan Kenobi around eight. I bet on round six to eight and we cashed on round eight. So you guys, you know what I'm saying? I know I'm the casual concept, but uh, you might want to tail next. Time. Anyway, we're going crazy. By the way, we sat right in front of Booker T, the five time, five time WCW champion. Freaking his royalty himself. That was, like we were just talking to him like he was just a normal dude, bro. Yeah, he was he was heckling Christian a little bit over the David Benavidez fight. We do have to talk just a little, for, you know, briefly about the David Benavidez fight, but he was such a cool dude, man. Uh, we met so many cool people. Fr uh, Christian met Alexander Usyk tonight. Yeah, fist, bumped fist bumped Usyk. Uh, I got to talk with James Tony and uh, I mean, name the who's who. You got to meet Caleb Plant. Just crazy stuff, man. And, and we got to interview Gervonta, Errol Spence, David Benavides. Big thank you to PBC uh, for bringing us out because this was something I never would have thought this early into kind of my transition into to pro sports. I would have gotten an ability to do and I wouldn't have without them. So. Appreciate them. An amazing weekend. Um, but yeah, David Benavidez fight. Thought uh, Vucic did a lot to stifle Benavidez just by being there. Like, I don't know how to, else to say it. He was just a big body and he was tough and he was, he was just there for the fight. Wouldn't really take back steps from Benavidez. And if he did, it was to fire back. And he wasn't really landing with any sort of power and Benavidez was. But you saw Benavidez tank tested. You saw... His power maybe not translate the same way. He did say he has a torn ligament in his hand. So, you know, fair play, whatever's going on there. Uh, and to be fair, when I asked him to do the body shot, they said not before the fight, which I understand. So maybe that was why, or maybe it was just, you know, they didn't want to kill me. But long story short, uh, Benavidez, solid win. Again, Vucic I thought was, was uh, solid. I, I don't know any other words, but solid. It was a good fight for him. Show people he's on a world level. But Benavidez uh, at 175, man, you think about Bevel, you think about better BF. Unless it is really a, a ligament issue, I don't know, man. I think that 68 matchup with Canelo is probably the right one for his weight or the ability to win the fight. Uh, and, you know, for the money involved with it, Turkey Alshade, get that one done. But what a great night of fights. Again, as far as what happens next with Tank, I, I, I briefly talked about it. You know, Shakur is out there and, and he's got the footwork to be able to maybe manipulate Tank's low volume punching. Um, I think everybody wants to see that Pitbull Cruz rematch. I think Christian wants to see that bad. I want to see that bad. The way Pitbull handled Roley. I think their first fight was, was incredible. Uh, he was kind of the first guy to, to be able to take some of that power. I mean, Tank is now 30 and 0 with 28 knockouts. So Pitbull being one of the guys that survived it, and, you know, having just an iron chin and, and a forward gumption to be like, no, you're not going to push me into a corner. I'm going to walk forward on you and you're going to have to play the back foot game. Uh, I want to see that fight again. Outside of that, man, I don't know that there's many people going to be raising their hands. Ryan Garcia was there. Uh, we do need to talk about that. Ryan Garcia came to the fight wearing a number one Tank Davis or number one Gervonta fan shirt. And then on the back of it said, rematch me, bitch. <laughs> so... I'll give Ryan that. That was pretty gold. That was, that was pretty good. And yeah, so that fight, again, what weight are they going to do it at? Ryan's never made 140, so are they going to move it to 140? Or Ryan's made up weight class on 143? I don't know. It would be a big money fight, though. I mean, 
if you're not doing Cruz, and he's not going to chase the belts, which I think he, he may do that now, and you're not going to make Lomachenko still up in the air, I would like to see that one too. There's a lot of good fights out there for Javante Davis. If it's Cruz, if it's Loma, even though you could say maybe it's past Loma's prime and it's not the right one, I would still like to see it. If it's Ryan rematch, cool. Uh, I think it's probably a little too early for Shakur, but still, there's great fights out there, and I want to see them all, but I don't know what's next for him. I just know that Javante Tank Davis is a generational talent in the sport of boxing. If you had your doubts about him before, he can't really now. Like, Frank, it may have been too early for Frank, but he was top-tier level, and no one had beaten him. No one had even cracked the armor, and it feels like Tank does that to people. When they look invincible, he makes them look human. And that's what happened tonight. He actually turned Frank into the moniker, the ghost. That's what he did. So he's generational power. He's generational precision. I'd like to see him throw more volume, but he gets away with it because he's so analytical and he's so precise and he finds the shot. He did it again tonight. He wowed the crowd. It was sold out. You want to call him the face of boxing? I don't know if we're all the way there, but I'll tend to agree that he is at the lower weight classes, big money. He may be the face of the lower weight class boxing because it was packed in there. I, if it wasn't sold out, it must've been one seat. I was sitting next to Booker T for God's sakes. People were coming out to watch. I'm so glad I was here to do it. I usually do the watch parties, but this one, I was really, really glad. I'll take that core memory back and never forget the night that Javante Tank Davis made Frank Martin an absolute ghost. What happens next for Javante, for everybody on the card, for me, I may have some of those answers, but stick around, like, and subscribe. I guess you'll find out.